Welcome back to Katara Sojo. In the last time round, we went through all of Rin's endings. Now, let's just see if we can get Emmy's route unlocked to go through. Let's see, go for it. We've already gone through this option initially when we played through the game the first time, but I didn't really explore through this avenue, and I think this could be the avenue for Emmy's route. I heard from the school's head nurse that he had an incident the other day. Ah, so it's about that. Well, kind of, but it's not anything to be worried about. Yes, yes, it is. Anything that can endanger your health is something to be worried about. We'll try our best to prepare you for life here. Part of it involves knowing your your limits and how to work around them. It would be remiss of me if I didn't speak up about this. All right, I get it. I'm sorry. Mita closed his eyes in frustration. I realized this probably wasn't the best thing to say. Sorry tells me you're not sorry. Pretend as much as you want, but this isn't a normal school. A lot of people have put a lot of time, effort, and money to make sure that you and every other student here can have that same level of education as your peers. For you to abuse that by throwing out advice, especially medical advice, is plain selfish. I'm not quite sure if this is actually how he feels, or if it's something, some act that he's practiced many times to guilt trip students into doing the right thing. Either way, it's working. I understand. This is all new to me. And I apologise. I know my limits now, and I'll be sticking to them. Muta appears to lighten up a little. Satisfied that his measure has been received. So then, on to my next question. How are you finding your studies? I understand you were laid up for a while. We're not too far ahead, are we? We've been through this part. Don't remember going with Rin to the art club or classroom for a second time around. Well, I'm busy thinking about how weird Rin is. <laughs> Gosh, Emmy's been dragging me back to the art classroom. I feel myself starting to run out of breath. What's the rush? Huh? Emmy's giving an appraising look as if she's trying to figure something out. It's just that you seem to be in a hurry. I'm not sure if I can keep up. Comprehension dawns on her face. You're not out of breath, are you? There's almost an accusing playfulness to her tone. I attempt to deny it, but then I realize I've been breathing heavy since we stopped. Guess it's kind of obvious. A little. Not everybody can be in shape, you know. Take all kinds, right? Emmy frowns, and it's not a particularly good frown. Uh, that is, I should get in shape. Not that I don't already decide to try for that. After that flutter on the track, I figure there's a real need to get in some sort of running habit. I was, after all, feeling pretty good inside my false alarm. Well, actually, I wasn't, but it was... fun? Meanwhile, we're common... Sorry, my comment seems to have helped Emmy come to some sort of a decision. Well, that's it then. She gives me a serious look. You're joining me? Join you for what? I beg your pardon? In the mornings, you and I are now running partners. <laughs> I've got a routine all planned out, in fact. I thought we already were running partners. <laughs> I decided not to come along a, a third time. She produced a crumpled sheet of paper. I've got it right here with me. Why do you have your running schedule with you at all times? In case you forget, I take the sheet of paper and give it a once-over. Times, date, and laps all laid out. A slow increase from just a few laps a day. Uh, sorry, a few laps a day to... My God. Does she expect me to ha have me running marathons? And where did she find the time to get all this all together? And how long has she been playing this anyway? You've been playing this? A little... But it's really the nurse's idea. He told me to keep an eye on you to make sure you exercise like he told you to. A vast conspiracy. Maybe Kenji's onto something here. Nah, not Kenji. But he seems a bit too, a bit much for just keeping an eye on me. Well, to be honest, I've been trying to find a running partner in the mornings for a while now. My god, Kenji, if he could only see the un risky unfolding. What do you need a partner for, anyway? It's easier to keep up a workload if you're not the only one doing it. Isn't that obvious? You're less likely to quit if someone else is counting on you to be there, right? I see. And this won't only keep you running, but it will make sure that I keep running as well. Meaning that I'll be obeying the nurse. And I'll be keeping an eye on you, just like he asked. You, count, you caught on quick, I saw. And if I refuse, I have the intention of refusing, of course. But I've got to at least pull up a token resistance to such a masterly executed plan. Well, if he views, I'd have to pout. 
and you'd have to live be with being a guy who make Emmy Ibaraski pout. Well, some people probably get a, a knack out of that kind of thing, you know. You don't want that on your conscience, do you? As if to demonstrate, Emmy begins pouting. It's the most adorable heart-wrenching thing I've ever seen. Okay, I'll do it. Just don't do that. I feel like I just hit a puppy. So it's settled, right? You're going to be my running partner. Follow the workout. And the dietary plan. Dietary plan? Yeah, the dietary plan. you got to eat healthy if you're going to get in shape, right? You know? <laughs> I examine the workout routine closely. And this healthy diet is documented on a pie chart. I don't see a dietary plan on here. Oh, right, I forgot to give that to you. Another crumpled sheet of paper is produced and handed over. It's somewhat less detailed. I had the nurse help me come up with it. The amount of de de dedication that the nurse has to keeping me in good health is pretty overwhelming. I don't know many school nurses who would get one of their students to spy on me, much less help come up with a directory plan. Then again, I guess I'm not in a normal school. And maybe that's not such a bad thing. It's a good thing. Then again, the di this dietary plan seems to cut out just about everything that will be offered at this festival tomorrow. Hmm, so when does our running start? After the festival. Right after? Well, if I've had something to eat there, I could get a summer cake, you know. I mean, the day after the festival. I knew that. Was it that something we were supposed to be doing? Oh, I guess we should get that paint for Rin, huh? Oh no, it slipped my mind! God damn it, distractions. By the time we get the paint and get back to the mural, Rin's already wandered off. Oh well, Emmy and I both decide to part ways there, leaving the paint on the ground. Rin will find it, when she comes back anyway. Rin relied on us! Here's Emmy, hey, what the hell are you doing? Having br uh, lunch? Breakfast? You mean you just got up? Uh, it is the weekend, you know. Suddenly sleeping all morning feels like a crime. No, I meant lunch, honest. She's not buying it. Brunch? That's not a healthy breakfast at all. She snatched my food out of my hand and glares at me. What the hell is this girl doing? Hey, that's my breakfast. What happened to it being your lunch? That's my, whatever, it's my food. Emmy placed her hands on her hips and begins lecturing me. Did you really forget your dietary plan already? You need to be more conscious of your health, Hi Sal. What about your heart? My heart's fine the way it is, mostly. All I get in response is rolling for the eyes. I doubt that. You wouldn't be here if that was the case, would you? The girl's got a point, of course, but I'm not about to concede it. It's not that bad of a heart. Certainly, it can handle a little grease now and again. And yeah, of course, there's also the sugar later on for um, Emmy's victory on the track. Yeah, sure, and it handled a little running just fine too. Emmy seems unconvinced. Not surprising as, it, as I haven't even managed to convince myself. Maybe but if you're not sleeping the day away all the time. A devious look suddenly crosses her face. Of course, if you've been following a routine from the beginning, you wouldn't be in the situation. Hey, I've had a pretty eventful week, you know. For example, I almost died, and there was a lot of meeting people, and then I was on a roof for a while. Which is no excuse for slacking off, you know. A little near-death experience is no excuse for skipping basic exercise, like running in the mornings. She nods as if something important has just been decided. So it's settled then. You see me over your ways, and are willing to adhere to my routine, right? My life is not for you to decide of what you want to do with it, you know. I'll see you bright and early in the morning. We'll be running, buddies. You know, you've already convinced me that yesterday that this was a good idea. You don't need to convince me again. Not that I did a good job of being convinced. But she's right about eating healthy after all. And here I am ordering up something grossly unhealthy. But delicious. There are important things that... <laughs> there are more important things than delicious, aren't there? Like staying alive? If they weren't here browbeating me for my positions, I'd probably... Hey, wait a second. A sudden question springs to mind. Hey, why the hell have you taken such an interest in my well-being? Emmy shrugs and grins at me. You're the new guy. That still doesn't answer the question. I figured... Okay, that's just harsh. 
<laughs> I think you don't have any friends yet, right? Besides, I've caused you trouble all week, right? I owe you for not getting angry. And I told the nurse I would anyway. Uh, crazy as a girl. Running girl wants to make me healthy. Well, I suppose there are worse fates. Okay, that sounds fine. Thanks for your concern. Tomorrow morning, then? I figure that ends the conversation, so I turn to leave. Not so fast! I feel a hand on my collar, and in a second I've been yanked backwards. Hey, no need to be so rough! What do you want now? <laughs> Amy looks almost wounded by my annoyed question. Thought you could use for company. Her eyes narrow. Besides, you were just going to try sneaking some more of that fried stuff, weren't you? Well, I wasn't going to, but now she mentioned it, it would have been a really good idea. I was not! Another glare. Okay, maybe I was going to get a little. But glare continues. Okay, a lot. Jesus, I'm a danger myself and others, aren't I? I get done agreeing that I need to be healthier. And I may immediately start concerning my next unhealthy habit that comes my way. I knew it, you can't be trusted. Now I definitely have to stick with you. This whole situation feels really silly. I can only imagine what passerby think of the sight of me being lynched by a tiny girl half my size. Size matters not, and Yoda would say that very clearly. Maybe I should just give up for now. Fine, do what you like, but make it quick, okay? Might as well make the best of this. What do you want to do? Or, what do you want me to do? Emmy thinks for a minute. Well, I promised when I stopped by a mural. So let's do that. I confess I'm slightly curious as to how her mule turned out myself. So again, I consider there are worse fates. I give a nod of assent and find myself almost dragged bodily through the crowd as Emmy races to our destination. By the time we reach the dorms, I can feel my heart pounding. My heart shouldn't be pounding after just that. I take a few deep breaths, willing myself to calm down. I'm one of the most normal looking people in the school, but I still have to be here. Sometimes I almost wish I'd lost a hand or something. Don't say that. At least when it'd be obvious that I belong. But instead, I don't even look sick. Even now, trying to catch my breath, I just look out of shape. Emmy looks back and notes my state of distress. You're not going to die on me, are you? Well, if you stop grabbing me by the collar and dragging us along, maybe we wouldn't. Please don't. It'll be all my fault, and I don't want to deal with that kind of guilt. Again? Besides, after the last time, I really don't think I need to see that again. Especially because the nurse will totally say it's all my fault. Our fault. Nah, uh, I'm fine. Guess I need to start running after all. And you wanted to keep eating your greasy whatever it was. See? It's a good thing I found you, right? Just stop it, Emmy. Yes, it was. Maybe. Of course an ad for I wouldn't be in the state if she hadn't dragged me across the festival grounds by the air collar, whatever it was that she grabbed me with. Grabbed me by. Further conversations interrupted by the sudden appearance of Rin. Hello, Rin. Oh, it's you. What do you mean, it's me? Hello, Emmy. Hey, Rin. I brought Heiser along because he was going to give himself a heart. I, for goodness sakes, was not, okay? Would you stop manipulating the situation in hand? I was not. My objection goes unnoticed. We stopped by to see how the mule turned out. Rin nods slowly. Well, it's right there. You can see it pretty clearly. Yes, because there's a brick wall. And where it's covered with what was just white... Con... Not, not concrete, but it's like concrete. But you... You plaster it on a brick wall and you create an area which you can then paint on. But then again, haven't people like done graffiti on brick walls? I find myself wondering how long Rin has been standing here in front of the mural. Has anyone even stopped by to look at it? Are we the first ones? Obviously we're not the first to see it of course. I mean it's pretty big. You'd be hard pressed not to see it if you come along this way on your daily routine. At the same time I don't act, so I don't think anyone has actually talked to Rin about it. Anyone but us that is. I feel compared to say something. It looks pretty good. I'm still not happy of how it turned out, but I guess that'll do. She seemed to almost resign to it. I'm not sure what she expected as a result, but I guess she didn't quite get there. Hmm. 
We stand in front of a mural taking it all in. I think there's a lack of blues on here. Actually, there's some blue, but I'm not going to lie. Uh, but I think there were more, more colours to it if we um, didn't hurry when it came to... Um, not hurry, but took our time when it came to getting more paint for um, Rin. It actually, it's actually fairly interesting. The colours swoop and blend together, dragging me along with them. There's a dreamlike quality to the whole thing that makes me almost feel sleepy. I try hunting out some of the colours Emmy and I grabbed for her. Try as I might, I can't see any Prussian blue. Oh well, I'm sure it's in there somewhere. A very specific kind of blue. My feet start to hurt, but Rin doesn't seem inclined to move on. Emmy speaks up. Hey Rin, have you eaten? Of course, you can't survive otherwise. What about in the past five hours? Maybe, but I'm hungry again, so maybe that means I'm I'm wrong. Emmy grins and claps her hands together. Good, come get some food with us. Rin nods in assent. Okay, but we should hurry before they notice I'm gone. Somehow I don't think they care whoever they are. As we head back to the food stores, I cast a longing eye over the fried food. No, I'd better not. I'm pretty sure Emmy wouldn't let me anyway. We find a nice spot on the grass and sit down to eat our purchases. Well, my purchases anyway. Somehow I wound up paying for all the food. Surprisingly, my unfried food is pretty good. Sun is forwards as Emmy and I eat and Rin stares at something or other. Occasionally eating a bite or two of her food. I finish my meal first and lay back on the grass. Emmy glances up from her food. Tired, high cell? A little, I guess. We're not going to disclose the reason as to why we're tired. <laughs> Sorry, Emmy. Well, don't oversleep or anything tomorrow morning. Well, that's what we call an early night. We start our running morning runs, remember? Actually, they slip my mind. I was actually just enjoying myself. Wandering around the festival with these two has actually been fun. Yeah, I'll set an alarm. You better be there. I'll get angry if you aren't. God forbid. And what are you going to do about it? Come to my dorms and assault me? And then say that you have won a soldier just simply because you're a tiny little girl and nobody would believe that I would say that I got assaulted by a tiny little girl? I don't think God comes into it. It's a metaphorical saying, Rin. Unless there's some kind of freak accident in your alarm clock. Sh shots out. That might be a random act of God. Well, don't cause any random act of God. <laughs> act of God, then. A plan forms inside of my mind. It's a plan that makes me feel kind of guilty by throwing to execution anyway. Damn it, I've earned a little fry food. Anyway, I'm going to start running tomorrow, right? So the actual routine all starts then. Not now. Ergo, the dietary portion starts tomorrow too. Ergo, I can have something unhealthy today. A sort of final farewell to all the stuff I used to eat with wild abandon before the hospital. Actually, I suppose I should head back to my room. I had some homework to do, and if I'm going to run in the morning, I should make it an early night. Those now it eyes again. You sure you're not just going to sneak off and buy some of that fried stuff? <laughs> Now I'm too full to bother now. I pat my stomach for emphasis. Besides, you two have cleaned me out anyway. Emmy giggles. A surprisingly pleasant sound. Another pain of guilt. <laughs> She's got to know that I'm lying to her, doesn't she? Or is she just trust that trusting? I feel kind of like a monster. All part of my master plan, High Sal. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow morning then. Thanks for the food and for keeping us company. And here I thought she was doing me a favour. Rin nods in agreement. I won't say see you tomorrow because there would be like predicting the future and I'm pretty sure I can't do that. It's not called predicting the future, it's just common routines of seeing a person tomorrow because they're in the same class as you or they're on the same route as you at the same time. Okay, bye you two. I feel oddly glad I decided to leave my room today. Not a bad way to start my second week here, I suppose. So that is definitely something of what we call Emmy's route. Once I'm sure I'm out of Emmy's light of sight, light of sight, I make a beeline for the food stands and buy some cake. At least it's not fried, right? That's slightly better for what I was planning to do. I still feel a little bad about lying to Emmy, though. Well, she doesn't need to know our every single action that happens on a 
day-to-day -day basis or second-to-second -second basis. She really does seem concerned about my health. I'll make it up to her somehow. Better head to my room. Hey, I do have work to do. My book waits for me and I flop onto my bed and run through the fireworks display. Yeah, because the last time we were watching the fireworks display, we were sleeping next to Rin. Eventually, the walking around, or more accurately, running around, catches up with me. I really am out of shape. It may drag me out in the morning to run. Might just be a good thing after all. There's something to look forward to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We did... Okay. And here we go along the running track. The running track along... Oh, and we're... It's okay, man. Just do it in your own pace. Don't try to... Don't! Don't keep up with her! Or else you're going to end up on the floor. There we go again. Don't. God damn it. <laughs> and then there she is as well, for goodness sakes. Uh, how? How is she able to lift us? A tiny little thing be able to lift us? Oh my gosh, she is really sweet, though. I'm not going to lie. She is very caring for her friends and their well-being. So she's doing it out of an act of kindness rather than some kind of selfishness. And an apple! And a piggyback, for goodness sakes. <laughs> that is real sweet. Honestly, real sweet. Act 2. Form. Our form. Their form. Just a form in itself. So yeah, entering Rin's, Emmy's route. My arms beeping stutters the early morning quiet. And I find myself wondering where to find the motivation to rise. Running! Running from our sleep and into the waking world! Put me back to sleep, please! Class is still quite far off, but I agree to run with Emmy in the mornings. Really, I'm not that interested in running as a hobby, or even as a possible life-lengthening exercise. However, I feel obligated to follow through on my promise to Emmy yesterday, which is why I find myself throwing on some running shorts and a light t-shirt. And the cool morning air caresses my face as the morning sunshine courses the down on the grass to sparkle, nearly blinding me at first. As I make my way down the track, an ugly thought strikes me. What if this is some sort of joke that Emmy's playing on me? Would that surprise me? Really? That'll probably do it to the new guy, too. At the very least, I'm sure Emmy and Rin made a bet on whether or not I actually show up. I feel a sense of trepidation as the track comes into view. I'm not late, how dare you! It would seem that Emmy is already there, what a relief. Not according to my watch, we both are early in fact. Damn, you got me there. Emmy sits on the bleachers, decked out in her running gear, waiting somewhat patiently for me. I'm glad you're actually here. Okay, I was afraid that this, this was a joke or something. Now, I'd never make someone get up early for nothing. Plus, Rin owes me 500 yen now. She didn't think you'd actually show up. I knew it. Nice that uh, Emmy was on my side, at least. Emmy hops off of the bleachers and begins stretching out. Limbering. She's remarkably leffy, almost like a dancer. I set out to stretch as well, but then realized I don't exactly remember how to stretch properly. Come on, man! It's been ages since I've stretched for anything. If you don't count my one stint at running last week. And even then, I don't think I actually stretched beforehand. The spectre of my long hospital st stay rises up again. I can't say I was all that active before the hospital stay, though, so maybe I'm just being morous. Emmy giggles she watches me stretch out. No, 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 hi, so you've got to hold it for longer than that. I'm trying, it kind of hurts a little. Ah, that's because you're out of shape. You've got to get some flexibility in you. Like this. Look, we can't do 180 splits of our legs, okay? Yeah, you're going to do... To demonstrate, Emmy reaches down and puts her head through her legs. God bless you, Emmy. I see. Is that the sort of thing I should strive for? Of course, flexibility is important for any runner. You'll be able to go faster the more you stretch out. That does make sense, though. You need to limber up and make your muscles not stiff. With Emmy's help, I managed to stretch myself out properly. I can't but notice that when she thinks about how to explain things to me, her mouth scrunches up in concentration. It's adorable. Not bad, Hysel. Come on, we better start running. 
We'll start off with just a mile, okay? That's four laps around the track, got it? That sounds fine to me. This shouldn't be too hard, right? Just don't try and race with Emmy, for goodness sakes, man. Don't keep up with her. Go at your own pace. A hazy memory of running a mile for gym class surfaces in my mind. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. And then Emmy sets a pretty good pace and I fall in behind her. Try to keep up. You're going to torment us, aren't you, Emmy? Roger. We run the first curve of our instant, though I can already feel my heart rate increasing slightly. By the second curve, I start to breathe through my mouth. Emmy doesn't even seem to be breaking a sweat. As if to punctuate her superiority, she turns around and starts running backwards. Are you doing okay, High Sal? Never. Better. Oh, really? Maybe I should speed up then. Hmm. Oh, no. Wouldn't want you to overexert. It's not about. Oh, it's you! My heavy pants and wheezing makes the statement less convincing than I had hoped. Emmy simply smiles and turns around again. Your burst, High Sal, will stay at this pace. I get the feeling I've been mocked. If I weren't in such a terrible shape, I'd probably feel offended. By the third lap, my breath is coming ragged gasps. I'm also awash in my own sweat. Gross. We round the curve to start our fourth lap, and Emmy looks back at me with a grin. Here we go. She takes off at blinding speed while I stubbornly stick to my slower pace. By the time I got to the first turn, she's already running the second. As I struggle across the back stretch, Emmy continues running and catches up to me. Come on, High Sal, you can do it. Emmy, you're going to make us have another heart attack, and not by greasy food, but by your overexertion of us by running. I answer her, but I'm too focused on getting air into my lung and ignoring the burning my leg muscles. Part of me wants to say something like, maybe you can, but I'm about to die here. But again, I doubt I could actually form the words right now. Exactly. Speaking requires you to exert oxygen. I doubt I could actually form words right now. It requires you to exhale breath. Emmy keeps pace with me as I run the second turn across the finish line. Her sprint seems to have gotten her sweating. It's actually caused her shirt to turn slightly translucent. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop with these details, my man. I feel a vague stab of guilt of being the sort of guy who stares at a girl's chest, but my legs and chest are burning so bad I can't bring myself to care that much. Not bad for a first effort, High Sal. Kind of you to say so. Emmy seems to be. If not out of breath, at least breathing a little more heavily than she was before we started running. It must have been the sprint that did it. Hey, I've got to get a few sprints in. You should walk around the track to cool down. Then we can stretch out and we'll be all done, okay? Sounds great. <laughs> my legs are on fire and my breathing is still heavy, but surprised my heart seems to be taking the strain well. Another triumph of medical science, I suppose, yes. I don't believe in, like, religious miracles. But I think the closest thing that could be to a religious miracle is science itself. But of course, religion and science are both like south and north poles in a way. They're both opposites to each other. And um, I think when a new scientific discovery is made, it's just so profounding. It's wonderful. You should put your hands behind your head. It makes it easier to catch your breath yes because you're opening your chest out oh uh surprisingly she's right i begin to stroll around the track happy to feel my breath coming back to me there's a blur as emmy sprints by me watching her run is absolutely fascinating it's not just because she's on prosthetics though that is interesting the really interesting thing is the way her face changes i can only catch glimpses of it as she runs by but her eyes seem to come alive with a sort of fierce joy. It's as if there's nothing else in the world but her on the track. That in a way is good because you're aiming for there to be only you and the track. By the time I've gotten to the final stretch, Emmy seems to have finished her sprinting. She's breathing heavily now, but she's wearing a satisfied grin on her face. She waves at me cheerfully as I near her. Being out of breath and sweaty means you've done a good job. If you say that you've done an exercise just now and you're not sweating or out of breath, then that means you've not done it. 
or you've not done it enough. Feeling better, right? Actually, yeah. Do you want to take another lap around with me? I've got to call down to you now. Part of me would rather sit down and not move, but something tells me that would be a bad idea. Besides, if I sit down, there may be no getting back up again. Exactly. Sure, why not? Emmy's got her hands behind her head now as well, which makes her seem very relaxed. The position of her arms almost pulls her shirt upwards ever so slight. Though I can see a small... Stop it! Stop looking at the features of the body! I do my best to act for gentlemen and not look. But the contrast of her skin against her red running shorts is rather arresting. Damn it, man! Stop it! So how do you feel, High Sal? Surprisingly good, actually. I'm sore and tired, but surprisingly good. As soon as I say it, I realize that it's true. Sure, part of me wants to lie down and die, but I feel like I've accomplished something. It's almost like a glow throughout my body that persists despite the soreness. Yeah, that's a runner's high. Runner's high? Yeah, it has something to do with adrenaline. Okay. Emmy thinks for a moment as we walk, trying to remember. Then she shrugs and grins at me. I don't actually remember. It's a good feeling, though, isn't it? Why? <laughs> Why that? Of all things. Why that? I open my mouth to respond shortly before processing what she just said. Amy watched my face for a few moments before bursting into laughter. Sorry, sorry, I couldn't resist. You're just too easy. Why did I agree to roll with you again? Amy just laughs harder. She takes a hold of my form and tilts it, allowing her to get a better view of my watch. Her face changes the moment she sees the time. Oh no, we better get a move on, High Sal. Class in an hour and I need a shower. It doesn't take that long to shower, but then again, there's also the walk to the dorms and then take the shower, then get redressed and stuff like that. I should probably do that as well. I need to see the nurse too. Maybe write me a note for being late. Why do you need to see the nurse? Emmy points to her prosthetics as if that would explain everything. Yeah, maintenance of the prosthetics. It's important to check for irritation. You know, for sweat or friction or anything. Normally I'd only go after practice, but if we're going to be doing these morning runs, then I guess I'll see him twice a day. Wait, so Emmy only has started doing these runs since I showed up? If it's more convenient for you to run with me at a later at a later time, don't be silly. I've been to start running in the morning for a while now, but if I didn't have a partner to run with, I'd be less likely to keep up a routine. It's always hard to blow off a commitment if you're going to let someone else down, you know? So you'll be my running partner for the mornings. We both need the exercise so it all works out, don't you think? Yeah, perfect. Did it have to be me though? Yes, because you're the new guy and that makes you different from everyone else. Well, I guess I can't complain too much. I mean, she's pretty fun to hang out with. She's an energetic girl. Like North and South in comparison to Rin, and Rin's kind of not the energetic girl, but the more la laxed girl. And she's right, I need to do the exercise. Doctor's orders, even. Emmy waves a quick goodbye to me. They're only saying that because they're concerned about your well-being. Right, I'm off. Come have lunch with us, okay? What? Lunch, you know, the meal in the middle of the day. Come, yeah, I know what that is. Where? The rooftop. Rin likes it up there. When? Lunchtime, when else? That was a silly question. Yeah, but I sort of felt the need to ask all three of for completeness sakes. <laughs> Emmy laughs and grins. I don't think I've ever seen a girl smile so much before. Not bad, High Sal. See ya. With that, she takes off like a shot for the school building. I guess she's going to see the nurse first. I hurry back to my room and hop in the shower and to find that water takes a while to heat up. The shock of the cold water nearly kills me. And now it's all steam. I managed to warm the water a bit and spend some quality time feeling my muscles lose them. My heart, surprisingly, feels the least bothered by the run. I suppose that's a good thing. Even if it does make me feel like a bit of a worse. This is just a... This is... Sorry, this is just the start of a long journey, my man. I mean, at least I'd have an excuse beyond I'm out of shape if my heart were bothering me. Guess I have to keep this running up otherwise. I'm sure Emmy won't let me hear the end of it. Or the head nurse. 
It's only after I get out and dry myself off that I realise I've only that I've only ten minutes left to put on my clothes and get close. Crap! And we get there. Hmm, the hands on the clock finally set me free from the tandem of yet another fun-filled class. Getting up from my seat proves to be more of a problem than I anticipated. My legs are killing me from the morning's run! Maybe doing these with Emmy isn't such a hot idea. Stop it! Still, the run's give me a head of an appetite. That's what it does. I'm halfway down the hallway to the cafeteria. Remember, I've got my lunch with me. My parents sought to f saw fit to provide with some pre-packaged stuff when I moved in. And a good thing, too. The hallway is packed with students headed for the cafeteria. Going back is like swimming upstream, but I've got an appointment to keep on the rooftop. It takes me a moment to find the staircase leading up to the rooftop, but I'm willing to bet that Emmy and Rin aren't up there by now anyway. In fact, I think I saw Emmy along, along the bodies in the hallway headed for the cafeteria. I step out of the door to the roof and take a deep breath. I thought you would be complaining about how many stairs there would be and the fact that your legs are killing you by going up the stairs. But fresh air blowing against my face and body almost makes my legs hurt less. Maybe if I'm upside down. Part of me wants to be surprised that Rin's already up here. What's that going to accomplish? Fiends in the clouds. Can you just look at them right side up? Rin rolls her eyes in something approaching exasperation. Then I wouldn't get a new perspective. I like that. When you say some odd things, it's like a new perspective. Sorry. Is upside down really a new perspective? Yes, it is, actually. Aha, uh -huh, that caught off guard. Rin looks pensive. He may have a point. Maybe sideways? As Rin lies down on the bench to look at the sky, I give up. Unfortunately, Emmy chooses for a moment to burst through the door carrying two bags. She nearly takes the doors off the hinges. Sorry it took me so long, there were a ton of people in line. Hello. She drops the first bag in front of Rin and takes a seat on the bench next to her. You buy Rin's lunch for her? Sometimes, yeah. I'd have Rin buy my lunch for me in return, but I'm not sure how she'd carry it. Plus, I'd never buy her lunch. Wow! <laughs> Let's call. Sh Let's sorry. Let that be called straight to the point. If Rin's offended by Emmy's comments, she doesn't show it. Emmy s s sniffs. How ungrateful of you! I'm not sure whether the two are joking with one another or if I'm witnessing the beginning of a cat fight. The two girls stare at one another for a few tense moments before breaking into smiles. Ah, uh, hey Emmy, do you think being upside down has a new perspective on things? Does not have already had this conversation? Emmy looks thoughtful, apparently giving the question some thought. After a deep and profound pause, she speaks. I have no idea. Or at least she's as lost as I am. Hey, hi, Sal. You're coming to the track meet, right? What track meet? The question comes out of a balloon catching me off guard. Uh, I don't know yet. Honestly, hi, Sal. After I went through all the trouble letting you run with me in the morning, you won't even show up at my track meet? Wasn't she the one that asked me to run with her? Actually, she didn't even give me a choice in the matter. Wait, no, I didn't say that. She beams at me as if I just agreed to give, to give her a <laughs> So you will come after all. That's great. Okay, so what day is it on? I didn't say that either. I'll be going too, so I'll make sure he comes at me. Good idea, Rin. Maybe we can get some food or something after the meet's over. I feel like I've just been conned, but not by these two. More like by some outside force pushing me irrevocably toward my destiny. Or maybe I shouldn't read books that feature conspiracy theories theory so heavily. Otherwise I might wind up sounded up like Kenji. <laughs> so I suppose I've got to show up now. I don't think I could stand against both of them being disappointed. Well, Rin probably won't be disappointed, but Emmy sure will be. I never hear the end of it. Do you remember that time three years ago? If they're still friends in three years from now. Do you remember that time three years ago where I, you, you, you promised a shot to my track meet and you didn't come up to that track meet? Yeah, I'm reminding you now so that you don't screw up again in the future. Do you hear me loud and clear, Hi Sal? When is it again? Next week, Sally. I told you a few days ago. Did you? No, you didn't. I forgot. 
Well, you won't forget to come, though, will you? Of course I won't. I even make a note on a candle or something. Put it on my phone. Put it on my calendar. Put it on my fridge door. Put it on the shower notice. Rin nods sagely. That's probably a good idea, you know, unless time changes its course. Time just doesn't do that. It can do that. Rin gives a non-committal shrug. It hasn't yet, but you never know. Time is a constant thing. It doesn't just go more faster. This time it's Emmy who gives a shrug. I suppose it can't be helped if it happens. Not unless you're a time traveler or something. You don't actually think that could happen, do you? I don't think we do. Do we? Rin shrugs again. This seems to be a default response to everything. I suppose not, but I reserve the right to change my opinion at a moment's notice. For him, the statement makes a disturbing amount of sense in the force. The fact that I realise this now frightens me a bit. I wonder if Emmy gets this thing all the time. Uh, yes, if there was a time machine, we'll go back to the point where I want to go did not propose to us, and therefore we wouldn't have gotten that hard tap. But then again, something else would have triggered it down the line. If she does, she's not showing it. Though, Emmy merely nods. As expected. What's that supposed to mean? This time it's Emmy who shrugs. It's like she's using Rin's own weapons against her. Your response is the sort of thing I expected from you. That's all. Am I really that predictable? Emmy's smile seems to border on gloating. Nah, it's just that your unpredictability is pretty predictable. Well, that's alright then. I don't get the chance to see whether Rin's been serious or not. As the bell rings, Rin's not that kind of a serious person when it comes to social conversation. I didn't notice the lunch period slipping by at all. Hanging out with these two was far too interesting. Emmy jumps up, a look of panic on her face. Oh no, I need to stop by my room to pick up a notebook for the next class. Why didn't you have your notebook with you right now so that you can get to the next class as little time as possible? Don't you wish you had a time machine now? Rin seems rather smug as she delivers this line, like she just won an argument. Emmy ignores Rin's comment. Sorry, Hassel, but could you make sure our garbage gets thrown away? I usually clean up myself, but I've got to run. Sure, no problem. Her time management isn't great, I'm not going to lie, unless, of course, it's with running. Emmy darts away with an urgency I'm starting to expect from her. There's a pattern form of all this running around. I don't bother asking Rin why she couldn't help. She already seems to be preoccupied with something else entirely as she wanders off. She's probably used to Emmy taking care of cleanup, and for some reason I doubt Emmy's ever raised the issue with her. There's a pretty obvious reason. Cleanup from lunch doesn't take long, so I've plenty of time to toss out garbage and get to glass. Measure greets me with a wave and a devious grin as I walk through the door. Didn't see you in the cafeteria, hi chow. Yeah, I decided it was too crowded there. Richard grins gets even wider. Oh, really? Are you sure you weren't participating in illicit randis views? What are you talking about? You're on the roof, right? We're both Rin and Emmy, no less. You, Casanova, you. Stop speaking Latin, okay? Well, we just had lunch in that lunch, that's all. Mitchell bursts into laughter, drawing the attention of several of my classmates. <laughs> You're so adorable when you blush like that, hi Chan. She gives me a conspiritual wink. Don't worry, your secrets. There's no secret in the first place! There's no secret, exactly. Oh. Misha seems disappointed, then brightens up again. She was hoping to get a particular kind of reaction. Time will tell. I don't know what the hell she's talking about, but blessed our teacher comes in and the class starts. Yes, thank you very much for interrupting this rather crude conversation, teacher. Another day of class has finally dragged itself to a close. Unexpectedly, I managed to stay awake for the whole day. I'm pretty sure that counts as a miracle. My legs seem unwilling to stand up for a moment. I guess the run took a lot out of me. I head down the hallway and make my way to my room. And I sit down and half-heartedly chip away at my homework for a while, feeling like a vulture picking at a particularly unsavory carcass. It knows this is what it eats, 
but it's not sure if it shouldn't be ordering takeouts dead. I don't think I can take this, but it's important to get my work done. Now, let's see. What was I supposed to be looking over again? I know this is a losing battle, but I fight it anyway. Halfway through my math homework, I put down my pencil. If this isn't working, I need a distraction. Unfortunately, my options are, for distractions are rather slim. I'm not in a mood to read right now. Kenji is, usually, out of his room at the moment. If I go to the student council room, I'll just end up doing work for those two. And heaven only knows where everyone else is, except for... Emmy? Well, I suppose that's an option. I grab my shoes and head for the track. Emmy's probably down there. Track practice is just ending as I arrive at the track. The sun's beginning to dip low in the sky. Has it really gone that late already? What are you doing down here, Hi Sal? Come to spy on me, have you? I give a shrug to be honest, I'm not sure why I'm down here. To pass time. I don't have anything better to do. I think that's about right. At that moment, Emmy's the only person I can think of who I could visit. So I'm your last resort, am I? Nobody cool, nobody cool around, so I'll just go see Emmy, is that what you thought? She actually looks angry. A chance for some teasing of my own presents itself. Actually, yeah, I guess you are. Emmy pouts wide her eyes to give a maximum amount of puppy dog resemblance. Kidding, I was kidding. So you are down here to stalk me. To see you! Wait, what? That's not what I meant. Why did I stalk you anyway? It's not like you require stalking. If you're not asleep or in class, you're down here, right? Emmy laughs at this comment. Well, you're not all wrong, I suppose. But you forgot about eating. I do that too, you know. I nod, conceding the point. Plus, I hang out with Rin sometimes too. So really, I might take some effort to stalk. What do you two do together anyways? You don't seem to have a lot in common. She puts her hands on her hips and assumes a superior air. That's what you think. I've got all sorts of hidden hobbies, you know. Oh, really? Like what? Emily puts her head to one side as she's trying to remember what it is that she does in her free time. Well, Rin and I go out shopping sometimes. I guess that makes sense. Emmy's a girl, after all, but Rin is also a girl. Rin comes with you? We usually swing by the art supply store. Plus, she likes this music store that sells all kinds of weird sounding stuff. She says it helps her focus. That makes a little more sense. I see. Any other hidden hobbies? Na na na. All in due time. Now now. Why would I go and reveal all my dark secrets to you? We hardly know one another. Somehow I think that's all that Emmy has in the way of her hobbies. Still, I don't think my question has been answered. Even if you do have a few hobbies, I don't see why you hang out with Rin so much. I mean, she... Don't say that. This comment causes Emmy to laugh loudly. Ha <laughs> ha! That's the understatement of the year! So why? I mean... You're a lot better at conversation stuff, so I figured you hang out with a lot of people, but I think I've only ever seen you with Rin. Emma seems, uh, sorry, Emmy seems unusually defensive. Hey, I hang out with pl plenty of people who aren't Rin, you just don't see me doing it because I'm not in your classes. Okay, but that still doesn't explain why you hang out with Rin. I'm not even sure why I want to know this. <laughs> I guess because lunch was so strange. Emmy shrugs. Looking for a very, so for a moment, very Rinish. It's because we have similar looks. How? You don't look identical at all. If you were to ask me the least likely answer to my question, that would be it. Yet yeah, these two do not look identical whatsoever. What do you mean? It's like, okay, Rin pays and stuff, right? Yes. I'm not sure where this is going, but carry on. Well, I run. And, and, that's why we're sim- That's not similar whatsoever. Paint and running are two very different things to do. Probably your commitment is serious, but not the actual activity itself. You lost me. You lost me at the start, and I'm even lost now. Emmy frowns of trying to figure out her answer. Well, maybe it's that we do things for the same reasons. You know, we follow our passions. Okay, now you're starting to make more sense. So you're passionate about running and Rin's passionate about art. 
Is that it? Well, sort of. Let me think. Well, Ren explained it once to me. To me once. But I don't know how much of it I followed. Not surprisingly, I thought any explanation from Rin would probably confuse anyone. She says we both chase after an extreme. Like she's always trying to find a new way to show a particular feeling or something. And I run because of the feeling I get from it. And since we don't allow ourselves to be slowed down by anything, we make a connection based on that. What do you mean, slowed down by anything? Emmy looks surprised and points to her legs. You know, because I'm a runner, and Rin's a painter even with our arms. So we respect each other's determination. Yes, because they're both doing things out of a disability that would otherwise hinder them. Because, um... Emmy is using her legs, but, um... She requires her legs to be able to run. So therefore she uses her prosthetics to go about from A to B. But Rin... It would be easier to paint with your hands, but obviously she doesn't have hands, so... Emmy's task requires legs, and Rin's task requires hands. But of course, Rin uses her feet to paint, and Emmy uses her prosthetics to run. But you're still going about at a pace in which you would be using your whole body. And that's why we hang out, I think. Well, I'm not sure if that made any sense to me, but from Emmy's sheepish expression, she's not sure about it either. Honestly, it's not something I think about much. We just get along. I think that's really all that matters. I suppose she's got a point there. Another question strikes me, and since I've got nothing better to do, I ask her. So what got you so into running anyway? I've been running since I was very little, like somebody encouraging you to run? Okay, your dad was a runner, and so, as soon as I could walk, he started to teach me how to run. It was our father-daughter thing, you know. That's really nice. Our own mutual hobby. Hmm. What is the father up to nowadays? Because in Rin's route, there was a brief mention about, like, Emmy's father from Emmy's mother, whom I've forgotten the name of already. It's like they don't spend time with each other anymore because of work-related issues or even worse, of um, alive to dead status sort of thing. Did something happen between them? Man, I don't have a lot of time left. Sorry, but I've got to get a few more laps in before I go see the nurse. She races off around the track, hair streaming in the wind. It seems to me she's going a lot faster than she was this morning. As she runs the tracks, I catch a glimpse of her face. It's much the same as it was this morning, but her eyes seem to be taken on a harder edge. I guess she's right. I don't really know much about her. Well, obviously you've only been at school for a week. I watch her run for a little while and then stand up to head back to my room. Hey! She spots me and le leaving and waves to catch my attention. Don't forget! Same time tomorrow morning! Got it? Got it. My legs say no, but my head says yes. Homework beckons. Need a distraction, for goodness sakes. And now you're distracted. My body's tired, but my mind is kept away. Staring at the scene in the hollow darkness of my room, I grasp desperately for a thread of thought, hoping that I could run my brain into the ground. All I can think of is how I can't think of anything. But it's not productive at all. I wonder if it's a side effect of my medication. But it seems odd for it to take so long to show up. Then again, maybe I'm just not as used to my new surroundings as I'd like to think. I don't know, but for whatever reason, I'm awake and I shouldn't be. This is ridiculous. Ignoring my body's stiffness, I get out of bed and look, look at my clock. Four in the morning. Last time I checked, it was only one, so maybe I slept a little. I don't know. I throw in some clothes and head out of my room. A walk might do me some good. I'm surprised at how chill the air is compared to the relative warmth of the day. I can almost see my breath as I wander through the campus, waiting for the sun to come up or for me to fall asleep. At this point, either option works for me. I find myself at the track, where for the first time, Annie's not running, out running logically, four in the morning. I suppose that makes sense. It's too early, even for her. The bleacher seats are cold, but at this point, I welcome the sensation. The sun is starting to show its face over the horizon, and I know with an awful certainty but I'll get no sleep, mo no more sleep tonight. Ah, the sun's steadily strengthening rays start to warm me up, and I watch the dew on the ground begin to steam slightly. My mind calms down 
a little. And you're going to sleep, aren't you? Great. Someone's shaking me! Hey, wake up! Uh, wh where? What? Hey there. I guess I fell asleep after all. What are you doing out here? You're going to catch a cold or something. I rub my eyes and am confronted by Emmy, who bends over me with a worried expression. I'm still a little groggy, so my response comes out as a mumble. Go to sleep. Watch the sun come up. Sounds like something Rin would say. I shrug, feeling the stiffness that comes with sleeping on a bench for a few hours. Is it? I wouldn't know. Emmy grins a little at my somewhat cranky response. So, couldn't sleep, huh? Obviously, need to run you harder today. No! Even though I've only known her for about a week, this seems a very Emmy-ish Emmy response to the problem. Hey, my body was plenty exhausted after yesterday. My mom was just racing, that's all. I don't see the difference. If you run hard enough, your brain will get tired too. I'm seriously questioning the wisdom of doing the fist first thing in the morning. I don't know if my grades will be able to handle my, me tying my brain out like that. And Emmy pulls me from the bleachers with surprising strength for someone her size. Now come on, High Sal, we've got work to do. I don't actually know if I'm up to this today, but to be honest. I mean, I obviously didn't get much sleep, and what sleep I got was on the bleachers. I don't know. Should I really be running? Emmy glares at me. Good heavens. What are you talking about? Of course you should be running. How else do you expect to work out the kinks? You've been sleeping on the bleachers, for heaven's sake. The best way to get that soreness out is to run around a little. Now stop hiding the bleachers and get down here. There's no arguing that. I'm pretty sure she'd kill me if I didn't just do as she said. I get to my feet and hop down to the track. The sun is warming things up rather nicely, I think. Emmy and I begin to stretch out and I find myself once again hard-pressed not to stare. If this is how I have to wake up every day, I might be able to get used to this. <laughs> you know, High Sal, it's not polite to stare. I wasn't staring, I swear! Emmy raised an eyebrow and considers me for a minute, as if evaluating my response. There's a brief moment where I'm afraid of... <laughs> But then she smiles and laughs, shaking her head slowly. Honestly, you don't have to deny it so strenuously. In response, I clap my hands together and go for a change of subject. Don't change your subject! So, that's enough stretching, right? Emmy gives a casual shrug. Do you feel stretched? That's really how you tell. Well, I do feel up to run, if that's what she means. Yeah, I feel ready to go. Same as yesterday, okay? We'll just run for a mile at a steady pace. Don't worry about going really fast, just worry about keeping the pace. Got it? You're the boss. <laughs> Roll reversal. Emmy says you're the boss yesterday, but now we're saying you're the boss to Emmy. Emmy grins again, and we take off around the track. And obviously, I think I'm going to die. We're not even done with the first lap, our legs are on fire. My breath is coming in ragged gasps. I can feel sweat pouring down my brow, and we've only just run over a second turn. Come on, I say, you've got three more laps to go. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I think I might hurl. Somehow we're on the second lap. Emmy's not even sweating. How could she do this so effortlessly? Maybe it's because she's done it for a lot of her life. For some reason, I'm still moving. She's like a machine. Third lap. What happened to the second? Almost there, high sow. Liar, we've got another two! Nothing to be done. I can't do this. Emmy whirls around and begins running backwards. Her face is a mask of anger that surprises me. Never say that! If you say that, you'll have already lost. Keep moving. If you're alive, you can keep moving, damn it! What a language. We're on the fourth lap now. She really seems to want me to keep going. Legs move. 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 They feel so sluggish. I'm in mud or molasses or tar. I can't go on. I'll go on. Final straight high so Give it all you've got. I pump my legs as fast as I'll go. They keep refusing to obey my commands. Somehow I keep moving. Somehow I finish. That's it, high so I knew you had it in you. <laughs> the anger Emmy showed a lap ago is gone, replaced with pride. She's positively radiant, like she just won a gold medal or something. I stagger to a stop and fall to my hands and knees gasping for air. My heart is pounding far harder than it has in a long time. And I don't think it's done a sense. Oh god.
Please slow down, Hart. Just slow down. Stop racing. I cough and for some reason feel a grin crossing my face. So this is how I die, huh? Trying to stay healthy. How ironic. I'm all ready to give up right there. But then I feel my heart slow down. Two hands grab under my arms and tugs upwards. Yep. I look up and see Emmy standing over me with a mixture of delight and worry. On your feet. Come on, you'll never catch your breath that way. Somehow I managed to stand up. Emmy's been rather insensitive here because we've done that scenario before and yet Emmy was concerned about us last time. But now she's like if it's nothing. I try to raise my arms above my head but they feel like lead. I start to walk around the track while Emmy keeps closer, keeps close to me. Like she's afraid I'll fall over or something. She may not be far off. I feel terrible and say so. Emmy laughs. But you're f you finished, didn't you? You said you couldn't, but you did. Isn't that worth it? I'm not sure. I don't really have a breath to say so. But that small grin I felt on my face has earlier hasn't left. So what if my heart's weak? I still survived this morning. Maybe I'll survive tomorrow too. And as soon as it became a becomes a power that I'm not going to suddenly kneel over, Emmy takes off on her sprints. I don't know how the hell she can manage to sprint after running a mile, but I guess she's in much better shape than me. Yep, that's just the defining aspect of this all. Once again, as I walk around the track, I can't help I can't help watching Emmy sprint. Uh it's weird, but she's like a different person when she's pushing herself. Last time I noticed her eyes, but this time this time, it's her mouth that's catching my attention. She's not wearing her normal grin. She's still smiling, but there's a tightness to it. It's almost grin, but she's but she's fighting a losing battle, but doesn't care. She seems to be running harder like she did yesterday. Sweat has started to pour down her face, but she keeps going. Her mouth finally opens as she no longer gets enough air through her nose. As she passes me once more, legs pumping, arms swinging but in time, and her lips slightly parted. She looks beautiful. If you say so, my man. After we both take some laps around the track to cool down, Emmy changes back to her usual self. The transformation I saw in her gone. Not bad today, High Sal. There's almost admiration in her voice. What do you mean? I would have stopped if you haven't yelled at me. Emmy colors a little, seemingly embarrassed about her outburst. Sorry about that. I just can't stand to see people give up it's not about giving up it's about a medical condition that in which you don't know about because you've experienced yourself especially about something like this saying i can't go on is silly when you're obviously going on while you're saying it that's what this is all about what saying silly things emmy six out turn out at me idiot i mean showing that you're alive showing that i'm alive huh? i don't didn't know it had to be so painful but it does feel pretty good despite that. Besides, this is one of the hardest days. What do you mean? Well, if you start a workout, it's difficult the first day, really hard the second day, and then the third day is easier. You'll still get days that are really hard, but they'll pop up less and less. So this will eventually get, no, not really easy, but just easier. Yeah, of course. But then you have to increase difficulty or you'll never get ahead. You'll just get complacent and you'll lose that sense of accomplishment. So I'll have to run more than just four laps, huh? Yep, yeah, but not for a while. You'll have to be careful, you know. A thought strikes Emmy and her face lights up. Got it? Got what? You can come with me to see the nurse. That way you won't fall over dead or anything. Not if we've fallen over dead or anything in the first place. How charming. Uh, when? Right now, of course. You'll need a shower and everything, right? We don't have much time then. Grabbing my hand, she's off. Putting me along with her. I can't keep up with you. My goodness, you're in a hurry today, aren't you, Emmy? I have no idea how we got to the nurse's office so fast, but here we are. The nurse grins at Emmy and seems to completely ignore me. You've got plenty of time to take a shower and get to class, you know. There's no need to run through the hallways like that. I can hear you coming a mile away. Somehow it doesn't seem like he's actually scolding Emmy at all. It's like this is a sort of routine between the two of them. Emmy does a passionate imitation of remorse. 
I'm sorry, I won't ever do it again. Again? Again? The nurse and Emmy both laugh at some private joke. Suddenly, it seems that he notices me. Ah, hello, Hi Sal. What brings you here? Well, I've been... Hi Sal's officially joined me on my morning runs. I start to explain, but Emmy cuts me off. I thought he might need to visit you so he doesn't die or anything. Right. The nurse rises eyebrows in mock horror. Yes, that would certainly put me out of a job fast, wouldn't it? Well then, hi, sir, let's have a look at you. Lift up your shirt, would you? I'm suddenly very conscious of the fact that Emmy's in the room with me and blush in spite of myself. The nurse seems to sense my discomfort, but it only seems to amuse him. A bit shy, are we? He makes, he makes an apologetic bow to Emmy. Sorry, Emmy. I tried to get you a free show, but it doesn't seem to have worked. Emmy stiffens slightly and fires a look of annoyance at him. <laughs> well, bravo, nurse. <laughs> <Your name. laughs> Emmy bows to me apologetically. I'll wait outside, okay, hi, Sal. <laughs> I begin to stammer, not that it's not really a big deal. She doesn't have to leave, but she's already out the door and the nurse is laughing as he watches her go. <laughs> Still got it. <laughs> I don't follow. <laughs> he laughs again, like he's on some joke that's over my head. I can still get her flustered. There's a competition of sorts that we have going on for a while now. <laughs> That sounds incredibly sinister to me, and it seems as if the nurse realizes that too. <laughs> hmm. That sounds a lot worse than it actually is, come to think of it. I wasn't going to say anything. No, no, you're right. I should fill you in so that you don't get the wrong idea. I'm actually relatively new here, you see. I got hired on the same year Emmy started here, going here, so. Before that, I worked with Emmy during her initial rehab following her accident. Hold on, what? We had to amputate her legs after a really nasty car wreck. He nearly killed her and succeeded. He shuts up abruptly. I blink at receiving this unexpected piece of news. Well, that's not my place to say. Anyways, we've known each other for quite a while. So we have a slightly more familiar relationship than a strictly professional. He seems embarrassed like he's done something stupid. I guess he's really worried about that too. I wave a hand to let him know that it's not a big deal. Don't worry, sir. I promise I'm going to be discreet. I've been wondering about what caused Emmy to lose her legs, and that was one of the scenarios I thought of. There were only so many ways that could happen, but actually hearing about the facts is still a little shocking, of course. No matter how expected it is, it's still shocking. Well, thanks. You're a good kid, Hi Sal. I can see why Emmy became friends with you. She's quite indomitable, you know. What do you mean? You didn't see her learning to walk. She'd go for so much longer than the others in the hospital. She refused to quit. Normally it takes years to get to a point where you can even think about running again. Emmy did it all in about a year. He almost seems proud of her, like a father who watches his daughter win a competition or something. Hell, she'd probably have done it faster if not for the fact that we wouldn't let her. We wouldn't let her? Why not? Because she'd go for so long that her legs would start bleeding where they met her prosthetics it's a real concern it's why she comes by every day after she runs to say nothing of the risk of infection if her legs get cut up and her prosthetics are dirty but enough about that if we don't get you on your way soon emmy will think we're up to something as he says as he gives a wink and begins checking my heart rate the stethoscope is way too cold <laughs> he really should have heated up or something before he used it no after a few moments, he leans back, satisfied. Well, you sound pretty good to me, Hi Sal. You didn't have any chest pains while you were running, did you? No, not really. I had some trouble catching my breath, though, and my heart was racing by the end, too. Hmm, but the nurse frowns as I said this, but then shrugs. It's probably just because you're out of shape, but if you don't improve, then you should let me know, okay? Don't push yourself too much, and of course, if you have any, if you have any chest pains, come to me immediately, right? I put my shirt back on and the nurse leans out of the doorway to call in Emmy. What took you so long? Now I'm going to be late. The nurse gives me a significant look. I was just seducing high cell, that's all. What? Come on, what have I told you about seducing my friends? I expected Emmy to be shocked by this, but instead she seems merely annoyed. 
scold him and nurse if he were a child stealing cookies. I mean, I try not, I try hard not to blush at a nurse's innuendo. <laughs> I'll try not to do it again, for I fear young high soul may be lost to a female gender forever. Not freaking lightly. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that out loud, but both the nurse and Emmy regard me for a moment before bursting into laughter. <laughs> Told you it was funny, didn't I? Mm, I guess Emmy does talk to the nurse a lot about stuff. Yeah. Well, hi, Sal. You should probably get moving. You still need a shower before class starts, don't you? Crap, he's got a point. And it looks like I've only got half an hour. <laughs> Thanks for your time. I'll see you later, Emmy. I dash out of the room and the nurse begins to remove Emmy's prosthetics. As I head down the hallway, I can just uh, I can just barely hear her voice drifting after me. Emmy, you've got to be more careful. I make a way back to my room and show record time occurs to me that I've already been up for four hours and class haven't even started yet. This is going to be a really, really long day. Hope I didn't fall asleep in class. Yeah, we hope so as well, for goodness sakes. <laughs> And that, folks, I think is going to be where we're going to leave off this episode of Katara Sojo. As we have diverted from Rinswick, which we completed the last time around, into Emmys. Thank you all so much for watching, folks. Hope you're enjoying this route as well. I feel like Emmys is going to be a more fun, energetic route in comparison to the um, enigmatic, questioning route that is Rins. Although both are pretty enjoyable in their own ways. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next time with Katawa Sojo. Thank you so much for watching and take care of yourselves.